There's three reasons I primarily incorporate uh, unilateral training. The first one is to develop stability and strength in a weaker leg. So if you've identified or arm, um, a weaker leg or arm, and you want to try and obviously build up the strength on that weaker side, that is the number one reason I do it. The second reason is to try and mitigate any injuries, so especially around the sports people, when we're trying to really make sure that we're staying balanced across all aspects of the body. We want to ensure that we're not just always using the barbell and um, using different elements as well, such as dumbbells, kettlebells, but also making sure we're incorporating unilateral training. And the third reason is coming back from injury. When we are uh, coming back from injury, it can be a very good telltale sign or benchmark to know where both sides of the body are at. For example, if we're coming back from a leg injury, we know that the right leg can push X amount of weight. We want to ensure that the left leg can get as close to that as possible to ensure we get back to um, getting back on the field or back from injury. Olga here is going to demonstrate a few unilateral lifts, okay? And um, I'm just going to use these key ones that I tend to use for upper and lower body. The first one we're going to demonstrate is a single leg deadlift with a dumbbell. This is a single leg RDL. I'm going to do three reps of these just as a good demonstration. It's extremely hard, okay? A lot of stability here. When she's going down into this position, it's going through the ankle, knee, and hip joints. I'll come back up for us. And it asks a lot of it, and it's a large demand. So when we're doing these, I like to try and start. We can even have um, a partner to hold, or you can use a stick or TRX or any type of assistance when they're first starting up. If you get a little bit more confident, then you can develop through to just using no assistance. Using the dumbbell is great. It's really good for your balance and it helps counterbalance this. Moving on from the dumbbell, we want to start getting into some strength range. We can then go over to the barbell. The barbell allows us to load up a little bit more, which obviously allows us to gain a little bit more strength. So once we do get a bit more confidence, we can try and perform the exact same move, but using the barbell. Once again, the same movements, nothing changed, except for the loading parameters have changed. All I'm asking it to do is the same movement, keeping that bar nice and close. The same demand is going through the ankle, knee, hip joint, and it's a great hinging movement. And once again, it's all about that unilateral movement. So we're working on one leg, the weaker side, I'm probably gonna get a few more reps out on, even if I have to lower the weight. Spot on. The next key move that I like to try and use is um, everyone's favorite, okay, the rear foot elevated split squat. So we'll use the dumbbells first to begin with this. We're gonna use a left leg out in front to begin and the right rear leg behind is the right one. So once again, Olga's gonna give us a few reps on this and I'll talk you through while we're doing it. So opposite to the hip hinge before, if she just comes back up and continues these reps, once again, we're still getting ankle, knee, and hip stability, but this is being done in a different manner. Now, we can load this up a little bit more than the deadlift, okay, as the weight's not getting away from us. When we're using dumbbells or kettlebells, once again, we can uh, really incorporate a little bit more balance into this. If this is a real struggle, we can take a weight away, replace this with a stick, PVC pipe, TRX, um, or a stanchion or a pole in the gym, and we can use that as assistance. So when she goes up and down, she has got a little bit more balance assistance there. But once we get more and more competence at this lift, we can then just start banging a few more weights on, okay? A third one that we're gonna use for the lower body, moving on, is the single leg hip thrust. So Volga's gonna lie here, she's gonna put the bottom of her shoulder blades against that bench. You can put the hands on the hips from here. This would signify usually where you could hold a kettlebell, a dumbbell, or barbell once you get more comfortable. We're gonna then put a right leg up for now and we're gonna have just in this bend in here. This is really good because it's nice and specific for runners. It really helps get a, a bit of a, a sort of hip, knee, and ankle angle that we'd usually use when trying to perform some sports. It's also good as well to not to put too much flex on the quad. From here, we drop those hips and the chin comes down with us and then we drive up through that left leg. Obviously trying to contract that left glute as hard as possible because we're going through that left side at the beginning. And off again. Good, spot on. So they're the three moves for lower body that I tend to try and stick to with unilateral work. So the single leg deadlift, the single leg rear foot elevated sp uh, split squat. You can obviously just do a normal front foot elevated or just split squat if they're too challenging. And then the single leg hip thrust, 
and um, we're now going to move on to some upper body so Olga's going to grab the uh, dumbbell for us I'm just going to put this um, bench up so we get a better angle of what Olga's doing she only needs one dumbbell obviously because we're only working one arm so when she lies back on there okay most people do a bench press single arm bench press we can do from a neutral position and push straight up okay keeping that elbow locked in nice and tight okay it's the exact same principle the same reason we do those unilateral work we could have an injury this could be a weaker side that we're coming back from injury or we've just identified that we need to get this arm a little bit stronger so put a bit more focus on that one side from there you can do any normal um, unilateral or any normal lift that you would do you can do unilaterally I can move this up further and we're going to go into an Arnold press on one arm where we have the palm facing towards us underneath our chin elbow tucked in and push and drive up ahead nice and slow and controlled another overhead variation that I like to use is the half kneeling shoulder press so Olga's going to kneel down with her right knee on the ground whatever knee is on the ground that arm we'll be using as this helps us stay balanced as a counterbalance this left hand can either go out to the side or on the hip okay but we're going to avoid putting it on the leg because this usually makes people push off the leg so hand on the hip or out to the side whatever you prefer we're going to go neutral from this position so elbow tucked in tight and driving up towards the ceiling I really enjoy this one, this is a great one because this helps to stay a lot more stable in the core. We're aiming here for the shoulder, hip and knee to stay nice and in line. And you can keep an eye on any client with this. If they are rocking back too much, you can obviously just ensure that they bring their ribs down nice and tight. Thank you very much. Finally, the last one we're just gonna use is the single arm bent over row. So if I angle the bench, a little bit more like this we'll have a better angle in okay so from here Olga's just going to put her left hand on the bench left knee on the bench and face towards these rings here and all we're going to look to do here obviously is do a bent over row with a single arm we're going to look for the elbow to come back and the hand towards the hips we want a 90 degree angle on this arm most common error when we're doing this is people pull straight up like so I'm using a little bit too much bicep and shoulder so in that position there and then arm back down to the front again and then tuck back to the hip and back down and relax so there's a good pulling variation for the upper body as well so regardless of which exercise you do the three main reasons I like to incorporate them once again is just strength stability balance for the first sector then we're looking at if someone is injured how do you work around it and also how do you come back from injury really important exercises to try and incorporate are the ones I've just gone through unilateral training most people incorporate it into their programs but don't know why so hopefully this has just provided a bit of an insight